we will learn about aircraft engine operations. It is not all inclusive of everything we need to know on the topic. Additional information can be found in Chapter 11 of the General Aviation Maintenance Technician's Handbook. majority of reciprocating aircraft engines can be classified as one of these four types. Nearly all aircraft engines are air-cooled and depend upon air flowing through and around the engine to wick away excess heat. When running while sitting on the ground, very little air is being forced through the cowling inlets for cooling. Facing the aircraft into the wind will supply the engine with additional cooling air, helping to prevent overheating. Severe damage can occur to an aircraft engine if we attempt to start it with a cylinder full of engine oil. We need to be able to recognize the likelihood of hydraulic lock and how to address it. Follow these procedures to avoid damage caused by hydraulic lock. These next several slides show an, an abbreviated and generic checklist of the starting procedures for reciprocating aircraft engines equipped with float type carburetors. These procedures are not to be used for starting any particular engine, however. Each engine will have its own set of starting procedures specific to its application. When priming an aircraft engine during the starting procedures, it is important to follow manufacturer's recommendations. Overpriming can lead to increased engine wear and possibly an induction fire. Prior to engaging a starter, always conduct a visual check to ensure no person or objects are in the vicinity of the propeller and then yell clear to alert anyone in the area that the aircraft is about to start. And once the engine has started, check the oil pressure gauge for an indication of oil pressure. If a proper oil pressure is not displayed within 30 seconds to 1 minute, shut down the engine and determine the cause. Among the last of the starting procedures are a check of the ammeter to ensure the alternator is charging adequately and the suction gauge to verify operation of the vacuum pump. There are a set of procedures to follow in the event of a flooded engine. In the event of an induction fire, we should pull the mixture to the idle cutoff position and continue cranking the engine in an attempt to suck the fire into the intake. If this fails, then direct a CO2 fire extinguisher into the carburetor air inlet. While the starting procedures for carbureted and fuel injected engines are very similar, there is one important difference. In propping an aircraft engine, begin by choosing a location that provides for secure footing. Avoid areas with wet grass, loose gravel, or oil and grease spots. Chalk the wheels and set the brakes. Never lean into the propeller you will want to maintain your balance so that you do not fall forward when the engine starts. Always assume the ignition is on and the mags are hot. Faulty wiring or a bad ignition switch could allow the engine to start when you are not prepared for it. And do not grasp the propeller with your fingers when spinning the prop. Doing so might cause you to be pulled into the prop when the engine starts. Instead, spin the prop by pushing downward with the palms of your hand. Again, the starting procedures shown here for turbine engines are generic and should not be used for starting a turbine engine. Instead, follow the manufacturer's instructions for the specific application. Be sure to clear all FOD from the run-up area prior to starting. 
VOD can be sucked into the engine causing expensive damage and can be ejected out of the engine exhaust creating a hazard for anyone behind the engine. Foreign object debris creates a potential hazard for anyone in the vicinity of a running aircraft engine and a likelihood of causing damage to nearby aircraft. When starting a turbine engine, we must check to be sure that we have adequate oil pressure before engaging the ignition switch. If not detected early and appropriate action taken quickly, hot starts can result in many thousands of dollars worth of damage. If the engine fails to attain a self-sustaining RPM, shut down the engine and determine why. In all cases of unsatisfactory starts, turn the fuel and ignition off, then continue rotating the compressor for 15 seconds to remove accumulated fuel from the engine, or, if unable to rotate the compressor, allow a 30-second fuel draining period before attempting a restart. 